Chris is a big deal. And Don's a really big Giant fan, and I'm curious to see and hear what he has to say. But the Giants did something that I think makes them look so bad. Uh, Malik Neighbors is their number one draft pick, their first-round draft pick. He's great. He's going to be a great player. And he always wore a single-digit number while he was at LSU. He wore number eight. Now, he can't wear number eight with the Giants because that belongs to Daniel Jones. But he wanted a single-digit number. And the Giants really don't have single-digit numbers available. Although, for some reason, they can't take Drew Locke's single-digit number away. That's amazing. So you'd rather take it away from a dead man than Drew Locke, a failed first-round draft pick, who's your backup quarterback. Anyway, they end up giving Malik Neighbors number one. And they say that John Mara, the owner of the team, called up Ray Flaherty's uh, son, Ray Flaherty Jr. Now, Ray Flaherty was an end and a defensive end, and he was the first professional athlete, first professional athlete to ever have his number retired in any sport. This was before the Yankees retired Lou Gehrig's number, th uh, number four. So they retired number one in 1935. And John Mara, for some reason, which I will never understand, decided to call the Flaherty family and ask if they would allow Malik Neighbors to wear number one. What? Why? Now, they've done this once before, and once before, although I don't like it ever, you kind of understand it. Wellington Mara was very close friends with Ward Cuff, and he said that no giant would wear the number when Cuff retired. But then... Um, Y.A. Tittle was traded to Giants in 1961. He requested Cuff's number 14, and he was given number 14. So precedent exists for the Giants reissuing a retired number. So number 14 is retired in honor of both Ward Cuff and Y.A. Tittle. Here's the difference, Don and Peter. Y.A. Tittle was an established, outstanding player when he came to the Giants. Let's look back to last year when Aaron Rodgers came to the Jets, and there was a lot of talk about... Aaron Rodgers maybe having the Jets ask Joe Namath if he would give up number 12 so that he could wear the 12 that he made famous in Green Bay. But then, because he's smarter than you think he is, Aaron Rodgers didn't want to go down that path, said no thanks, and he took his old college number, and that's the proper respect that you give to a guy like Joe Namath. You don't take his number back. Why would the Giants, for a guy who's never played a snap, not a snap, in the NFL, Unearth a number one that was the first number retired and put his family in an uncomfortable situation. Imagine if you called the family and, and asked them, what are they supposed to say? They're supposed to be jerks and say no? Don, what would you say if they say, we're going to want to take your father's number and give it to somebody else? I would say no, absolutely not. I would, because that's, there's a reason we retire numbers. All right, it might seem silly, and, and, I, and I respect the organizations who say, we're not going to retire numbers, we're just going to have... Uh, a, a wall of fame or a ring of honor because it's football and we, we run out of numbers because there used to be a time where you wore a certain number because of the position, but the NFL has done away with that, thus that you got wide receiver could wear number one now. Because we want to be able to remember these guys. I, I, I was not alive. He, he, he last played football in 1935. But the reason you retire numbers is so these guys could be forever remembered. So that when somebody like me, who's younger, can look up and say, I want to see those numbers or talk to my grandfather about it. Like, so these guys could be forever remembered. And, and you don't take those down. They're special. So if my father was good enough to play in the NFL and play at that kind of a level, I, I would think it would be disrespectful to take it away. But I understand that the family probably feels awkward or maybe they just don't care. I don't know. But where I have a problem is the Giants even asking the family in the first Why place. Why put them on no, the spot? No, numbers are tired. Sorry. You know, it, it is a, I understand the players run the show now. I, I, I get that. But is it to the point now you can't even say no to them? That, they, that you have to bend over backwards for He's never played in the NFL. For all we know, I hope it's not true, but for all we know, he might be a colossal bust. Sorry. No. The answer is no. You can't. That number's not available to you. Sorry. Is, is it that wrong? Like, are the players that sensitive that if you tell them no, they're going to completely disappear and never play for you? I mean, come on, man. If anybody should know better, it's John Mary. He should understand and respect the history well, of the organization. Don, I mean, listen, do you remember your feelings when you saw the jerseys unveiled? This is a team that decided to honor 
the hundredth season so seriously with this alternate jersey and this right. whole look. And as Don so eloquently put it, I mean, they were they were honoring looks that not a, not a living human being can even remember. Why? Because the one thing the Giants have, even if it hasn't been uh, existent for the last decade and change, is a true history. So of all the years and of all the franchises, and to do it with a rookie, and to do it, Michael, when, as you just pointed out, there's another single digit available by a, a hacky backup. It's just such a weird, unforced error by the Giants. And, and unfortunately, guys, over the last decade and change, these unforced errors sort of team-wise have, well, have happened quite a bit. So spit in your face! I, exactly. I don't even th you know what? From everything I've read, right, Neighbors has handled it like a gentleman. He actually called Ray Flaherty Jr. Yeah. and said, thank you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to honor the number for your father. He did all the right thing. I'm so yeah. disappointed in John Mara I, for putting the Flaherty it. family in that sort of I, a position where they look bad if they say no. Hey, I have no problem with the Flaherty. They can do whatever they want. You know, I have no problem with neighbors asking. It does nothing that doesn't harm to ask. You know, I'd like to have that number. I'm going to ask. And he at least showed the class to call the family up and understanding the significance of it. My problem is with the organization allowing that even to happen. No, the answer is no. Number one is not available. It's, it's been retired. Well, here's, now, here, if you want, go ahead. I, I was, was going to say, if you want to do away with retired numbers and just say, well, listen, we don't want to get into this awkward situation. There's only 99 numbers to choose from, and we've got a long history. We're just going to go with the Ring of Honor, which you already have anyway, and do it. Then, then I guess you do that. At least you're still honoring. But if you still have retired numbers, then the answer has to be no. This is what Jay, uh, Ray Flaherty Jr. said. All right. Uh, the family's consent was not automatic. There was some dissent. Here's a quote. There are a few things. Probably one of the most important is I kind of polled my family. I've got two sons and a daughter, and, of course, that's their grandfather. Initially, my daughter wasn't that excited about it, and it was that she came around. Eventually, she said it might be lucky for him. That number one might be a good number for him. She acquiesced. We thought that would be the way to go. The family was also inspired by the chance to introduce Ray Flaherty to the current generation of Giant fans. Quote, that was John's point, Flaherty said, and that's a valid point. That number was the first one retired by the Giants, the first professional football number retired, and actually it was the first professional sports athlete number retired in America. Why mess with it? I'm shocked and disappointed that John Mara would do this. I'm not saying anything about neighbors because I, I always remember the story when Steve Sachs signed as a free agent with the Yankees. He wore number three with the Dodgers. And he asked the Yankee equipment manager who asked him, what number do you want? He said, three. And the guy said, well, that's Babe Ruth's number. And you know what Steve Sachs said? Well, he's not using it. So that's how players think. Yeah, well, that's how they think. I'm sorry. So... Maybe Malik uh, Neighbors asked for a single digit. He didn't ask for one. One means nothing to him. He didn't wear one at LSU. He wants Daniel Jones's but, number. And I mean, but, the and by the way, told him, you know what? Just hang for you. You might get it. I, I was about to say it's probably going to be available. Yeah, probably. And, 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 yeah. But Mike, but but what if but what if Don, that doesn't happen? What if Malik Neighbors has an incredible season this year, and doesn't want to change a thing? Uh, what if he goes on to have a great career with that number? You know, like, all of a sudden, younger people won't even remember that number was ever retired. Yeah, and, and it's just, and I want to bring this up, too, because Peter kind of alluded to it. Like, uh, B. Dilly says, I really and truly don't mean this in a start and argument way or anything like that, but it seems odd to me to get upset about the number, Flaherty thing, but at the same time dislike the throwback jersey celebrating the same era. Well, to me, it's apples and wrenches. First of all, nothing happened in 35. You're not honoring a championship. They're ugly uniforms that they changed. They didn't, that's not the uniform. They felt at the time, well, you know what? We're not going to wear these, this uniform anymore. We're not going to have tan pants anymore. We're not going to have red, white, and blue uniforms anymore in that way. They've changed the uniform. So obviously at that point, they didn't think there was any use for that uniform anymore. So why go back to it when you changed it? Nothing changed with this number. It's been retired since, you know, whenever they decided to, he last played in 1935. Nobody has worn it since then, so that, so that is consistency. They've changed the uniform numerous times, so they have no honor system when it comes to the uniform anymore. They've changed it. This was something that did not change for eight decades. Now it changes now for a guy that's never done anything in the NFL? 
You are allowed, guys, to say no to players, right? Or, or am I wrong now? I think now you might be wrong anything now. anything they want to do now. So it's, it's being reported that Mara would not have approved activating the number without the approval of the Flaherty family. He put the pressure on them by asking them. Why would John Mara, who has such an appreciation for Giant history, his family has owned the team since 1925, put that family in an uncomfortable situation of asking them if they would, in fact, allow their father's number to be retired? You know what? I'd have less of a problem if he took all the retired numbers and said they're all unretired. They're, we're going to have a ring of yeah. honor. It's going to be the names that are going to retire. But would he ever ask anybody? Would he ask Lawrence Taylor if somebody could use his right. number? Would he ever do that? So, so if the if the if if 50 years from now the Taylor family says no, would, the, would they be jerks? So that number gets to stay retired because the family said no. But this number now uh, is in, is back in circulation again. Awful. I I. I I just think it should be off the table. Or, like, I, like you just said and I said before, hey, w the NFL's changed the rules now. You can wear any number you want. Like, a wide receiver wasn't allowed to wear number one back in the day, but now they are. So that means that there's only so many combinations you can have. We've got so many retired numbers. You know what? We're just going to get rid of them all and just have the ring of honor because we don't want to have to be in a position where we're going to three digits because we run out of numbers. Here, then, then I would then I would understand that. But if you're going to continue to have retired numbers, then the answer is no. You can't have number one. Sorry, here, not going to ask the family. Not going to put them in that situation. The answer is here's no. Here's Mara. I understood that Malik was interested in wearing number one, and we initially told him no. It's been retired for many years. Then I thought I think we'd be willing to allow it if the Flaherty family would be agreeable to it. I spoke with Ray Flaherty Jr. a couple of weeks ago, and I've had several conversations with him since, and they called me today to tell me that they would be agreeable to allowing Malik to wear the number. I thought it was a very gracious gesture on their part, but I also thought it would allow us to at least educate. Stop it, John. Stop it. Educate people. Really? You, you're you're Don't. bending Don't. over backwards from Malik neighbors. He asked for number one, which he has the right to ask for. You told him no. Boom. End of conversation. Do you have any allegiance to the history of your organization that your family has owned since 1925? And you're asking a family. It's like, let's exhume your father. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you asking them that? You're putting them in a, the fact that it took them weeks to actually get back to him. There's an argument yeah. in the family. Why would you put a family in that situation from Malik neighbors? I, I, I really don't get it. I, I don't understand. This is not the way it should, it should go down. It, it, it should not. And again, there's no reflection on neighbors because he did the right thing. He's, in, he's entitled to ask. He called the family. And, hey, the family could do what they want. But the organization's got to be big boys and say, sorry, that's not, that number's not available. It's retired. And if you want to have a conversation about unretiring numbers, all of them, fine. Cowboys don't retire numbers. They have a ring of honor. The Giants even have a ring of honor. But if you retire a number, then I think it stays retired. Unless there's some kind of wacky uh, circumstance, but uh, this doesn't seem to be one of them. Because I'm sure you, what, the neighbors doesn't seem like the kind of guy, what, what, he's going to hold out? Is he going to drop passes on purpose? Is he going to be pouty and whiny and be a bad it's player because he didn't one. get the number he wanted? I mean, would the, imagine if the Yankees, if George Steimer had called Babe Ruth at that time his daughter and said, can we give Steve Sachs number three? And Steve Sachs was more of an established player than Malik Neighbors. And uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers got it. He knew that he would look bad if he took number 12. He said, I don't even want to eat, think about that. And you know the Jets would have bent over backwards five different ways to get Joe Namath to give up number 12 if that's what Rodgers wanted. But Rodgers was smart enough to know that's a bad deal for me. I'm not going to go there. And he didn't ask them to get number 12. The fact that you would even ask the family is disgraceful. And imagine if Woody Johnson called up Joe Namath. He'd probably feel funny about saying no, right? You're right. putting him on the spot. Is the number retired or not? Malik Neighbors? Nice. You got to give him number one. What did and one mean to him? He wasn't the first pick in the draft. And it's not his number. It's not his number. And I really don't think he would have put up much of a stink if they just told him, no, sorry, it's retired. Oh, I'm telling you, Don, and the fans don't believe me when I say it. Every organization in every sport, all they do is kiss the player's backside. They're afraid to say no to any of them about anything. Anything. You want this? Sure. You don't want to wear a tie? Sure. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Sure. 
They're afraid. They're afraid of players. And the thing with John, and I, listen, I respect John Mara, respect that family. And, and, and John Mara, he, you know, the, um, the miracle at the Meadowlands with Herman Edwards, he was the stat guy for CBS that day. Like, he loves this team. And, and, but I think sometimes his heart gets in the way of just making normal decisions. Like, I, I, I really think because he's such a fan that maybe he would be afraid to offend neighbors because he wants to win so desperately. And I want to as well. It's and, been, and, this and, has and, been a pretty embarrassing organization for the, for the last decade. I, honestly, and, as much as I love this team and respect this team, it's been a pretty embarrassing decade. But the one thing that you do have if you're a Giant fan is the history and the pride of the things that they've accomplished in the past. I think honoring that is still important. Especially neighbors, for something that would not have moved the needle all that much. Interestingly, though, Neighbors, guys, is the most exciting, dynamic offensive player this team's drafted in a very long time. Right. Now you put a stain on it. And now it, but they're so high. This is the thing. After making some bad decisions and some sort of uh, culturally bad decisions that w we remember over the last several years, and then some moves that didn't work out, as we've talked to ad nauseum. The, 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 the nature of the team, this, this giant way starts to change because you get desperate. And you start, Don, you start to You go, we got to get something. Please let neighbors be the guy. Please. And you start making bad well, decisions. I'm going to tell you something, Peter. You know, we blame the players for becoming divas. You know, sometimes these players become div divas because they're enabled to become div divas because of how the uh, ownership and the team enables the situation. That same thing happened with Odell. I, mean, I don't know Odell from LSU, but do you think that he was emboldened by the fact that nobody could talk to him, that he was allowed to do the things that he did, and they, they, they needed him so desperately to win that they allowed it to happen, and it became a problem? Like, so sometimes you let the, keep saying yes to these players and let them do what they want. I think that's what ends up creating and emboldens them to be the divas that they are. Would it have been that big of a deal? Sorry, the number's not available. It's retired. And I'm sure neighbors, he seems like a good kid, would have said, okay. But you open the door, and then he ran through it like any player would, given the opportunity. You know, it's, it's the same thing with kids, right? You say maybe, maybe becomes yes. If they had just said no, then it's no, and he would have moved on to a different number, and it would have been forgotten about. But God forbid if you say anything negative to a player, say no to a player. Because you're right, Peter, they're so desperate to win again, and he gives them and a chance for their quarterback that they're paying $40 million to to be better, that we're going to bend over backwards for him. When you start doing that as an organization, you already lost. Why didn't they have neighbors go to Daniel Jones and offer him a lot of money for number eight. Daniel Jones could use a change. Now, I, w I wonder if Mara gave the Flaherty family any money. He should for the embarrassment. Well, and, 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 and did they exhaust those options first? Like, did he reach out to Daniel Jones first? Did he sit down Drew Law? I mean, Drew Lock? They couldn't say, hey, Drew Lock, you give us the number, we're going to release you. Really? They couldn't do that? Instead, they bothered the Flaherty family? That, that's what I was thinking. We will just cut you, bro. You want to be here or not? Give us the number. <laughs> right, Thanks. The other quarterbacks what? have shaken loose. You know what? We'll get somebody. I, uh, again, sometimes I think you go a little too far honoring history as well, and I'm sure there's a lot of young people who are like, dude, man, he hasn't played since 1935. Who cares? No, I think history does matter. If you do honor these people, then they stay honored unless you decide we're not going to honor them that fashion anymore. But what just out of the circumstances because he wanted number one. What's going to happen to the guy, Michael, 30 years he wants from now? wants number 56. He's going to want 56. And you know what? All the people that don't care about Flaherty because he, he, they don't he, know him. he, he died long before they even were born. But you know what? Lawrence Taylor, they saw him play. How would you feel if you wanted 56? How would you feel if he wanted 56? Believe me, the people who think this is no big deal will all of a sudden think it was a big deal. What if you wanted 10 for all the younger fans? What if you wanted 10? Would you give it to him? If Eli said it's okay, would that be all right? Or would that hit a little different because it's somebody that's actually played in this era? Imagine if they called Kathy Lee Gifford and asked for Gifford's number. She would say no. I'm telling you, she would say no. And you know what? And I, maybe I'm all I know. I'm just putting myself in my circumstance. I mean, we've all had fathers. What if your father played, Michael? What if, well, Peter? What if your dad played? 
Uh, that, that would be one of the best things about my family to know that my dad's numbers were done. Nobody is going to wear that number ever again. That's a sense of pride in history. We can't go back and ask him. He's dead. And I would want to keep my father's legacy alive. But guys, I would say no so fast and with such pride and joy. A yes wouldn't even enter my mind. I, I probably would curse and hang up. <laughs> Let's go to Joe in West Harrison. <laughs> Joe. Great show as usual, guys. Yeah, I would absolutely say no. The problem with this world is today, Mike, I want to ask a baseball question real quick after. They want to change history. The people are gone, so it's easy. Let's go ask for the number. Like you said, there's no way anybody alive, LT, Phil Simms, they, and I'm a Jet fan, they would ever call and ask for that number. And then, like you said, with the Drew Love thing, I mean, I don't understand the big deal about going to him for the number. Offer him some money, like you said, or, or trying to cut him. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. But, again, this world today wants to change history. You're dead. Or, you know, holidays now, they, there's no respect for, for – the past. I mean, and let's go the opposite side with the Yankees. They retire everybody's number, including the Bat Boy. What's that all about? I mean, you got players like Judge. I don't know what his number was, John, but 99. I mean, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. One is way to the other side. One is way to the way to the other side. But um, but I'll tell you, I'll tell I mean, you one thing, Joe. Also, the Yankees yeah, don't ask anybody's Mike, family. Right, they don't ask anybody's family. I, right. I agree with that part. No, I agree with that part. But it's ridiculous. They retire all those numbers, Mike. You know that. And one more thing, because I was listening to your call on one of the home runs the other night that you said in the short right field porch. All right. What do you, I mean? What do you think would happen if it was Phil Rizzuto and he called? The, what he used to call those short the chink shots? I don't know what you're talking about. Remember, yeah, Phil's goal was a short home run over the. No, we're good. We're good. Thank you. Thank you for the phone. Yeah, call. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's go to Jesse in New Jersey. Jesse, Thank you. come on. Was that what I thought it was? Oh, oh yeah, that's what. The listener. Hey, Jess. Uh, Michael, Don, Peter. What's up? Hey, hey, guys. Been listening for a long time for seven years, but this is such a bad take, guys. I mean, Mara made the call, and the family gave the stamp of approval. That's that's it. I mean, I don't see what the big deal is. The big deal is that he made the call, Jess. That's the big deal. Why would you put the family in that situation? Yeah, but at least he gave them time to think about it. They could have said no, and I'm sure John would have respected their answer. And right, came back but why even ask? Well, why ask? Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a player. You can't say no to neighbors? I'm not, not retired, necessarily. not available. I mean, Sorry. I, no, but I, I think I'll leave that up to the, to the family as well to give the blessing. Like you no, can't well, do I wouldn't even ask well, him. Well, they have to give the blessing. He's not going to unretire right. it on his own. So it took but, them three weeks to give the blessing, Jesse. So do you think it was an automatic slam dunk? No, there was probably arguments with it. The, they didn't want to give the number up. Now, maybe if they did. so, But they shouldn't yeah. even put in that situation. Why would you even ask, Jesse, why? Neighbor, what, neighbor's not going to play? Just say no. Why can't you just say no? No, I mean, I understand that piece for sure, the history part. I understand he's the first one to get, you know, his number retired. But I think he probably just, you know, made the call for neighbors. They say, listen, I'll see what I can do. No, Talk no, to the family, no. The family. Jesse, oh, 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 before we get no, there. No, I'm not making But before we get there, before you'd even get to that phone call, the, the, the question is, did they exhaust? He wanted a single-digit number. His number's eight. I mean, listen, I think Daniel Jones should have been in play for a player as good as neighbors. Okay, but it's not. L guys, let's look through it. Brian Burns is zero. Not happening. Uh, Drew Locke is two. Okay, should be in play. Deontay Banks is three. Should be in play. Kayvon Thibodeau, all right, fine. Uh, Jamie Gillen at six. Graham Gano at nine. They exhausted but, every option no. for a single number before calling a Hall of Famer's family? Now, here's where I would agree with Jesse. Let's say this, this, this hit the news, that neighbors wanted number one. But it's, uh, it's retired. And the Flaherty family called and said, listen, we talked about it as a family, and we think it'd be great if we put the number back in rotation and had neighbors do it. Then, I'd be, then that's fine. Because they, they volunteered it themselves. Then, then I guess then John Mara can't say no at that point. Okay, that the, if the family, but I'm saying, why would you even ask in the first place? I want number one. Sorry, it's not available. It's retired. It's over. It's done. And of all the people why, I, I know the family that, putting him in that situation, it's John why? Mara, whose father's name is on the football they use in the NFL. The Duke, yep. It's John Mara. He should know better. He should be ashamed of himself for doing this. For a present-day player? Neighbors wore nine all preseason. Graham Gano. You, uh, you, you guys, you, their kicker and punter. You couldn't have gotten a kicker or punter? 
come on. It's not, listen, I, I hear what the caller's saying. It's not the be-all, end-all. And I, by the way, none of, none of the three of us are killing neighbors for it. He wanted no. a single-digit number. But I just can't believe they thought, like, oh, let's just call up the first-ever retired number. Let's call that player's family. It's such a and, and, guys, this would mean nothing if this team had no giant way. If this were the Tennessee Titans, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a franchise that just literally has no real – a Jacksonville Jaguar. Okay, it's the Giants. It's the giant way. It's it's Wellington Mara. It's the, that's the thing that makes it so odd, especially in a year in which you're celebrating the history. Again, and, and don't give me the comp of Y.A. Tittle. Y.A. Tittle was an established, excellent quarterback when he came over there. So, okay, you ask. And that guy was still alive when they asked. You're going to ask the, the kids of a, of a guy. Maybe the guy wouldn't have wanted it unretired. And this is, this is a rookie. I don't care if he's a first-round draft pick. He's a rookie. Why a Tittle wasn't a rookie? And, Michael, I don't uh, – in all the stories that I've read, did he, was he giving it that big of a stink? Was he, was he threatening to hold out? No. Was he adamant about getting like, I, it? I really think if they just told him no, he would have been like, okay. But they opened the door as the possibility, and, and he took advantage of it. Good for him. He wanted the number, and he got it. But uh, they weren't, uh, that, I, that I could tell, they weren't up against the wall. He could have just said no. It's also sad because, like, Flaherty is not the kind of name that young people will know. Right. So if, if you're the family, you'd want to hold on to that jersey retirement even more, this distinction, because he's of an era and, yeah. and was of an ilk of player that could easily he's be forgotten. And this isn't some favor that the Maras did for him. He, he's in the Hall of Fame. He was in the sneaker game. If you know the Giants' history, the sneaker game is one of the biggest turning points in franchise history. Actually brings Fordham into it, Michael. The, for, the field was frozen. They ran to Fordham. They got a bunch of sneakers. And they it was had Flaherty who said we should wear sneakers. Flaherty's right. the one who I mean, said it. He, he's ingrained the history of this franchise, the sneaker game. If you are a giant fan of any age and you care about the history of this franchise, the sneaker game is one of the biggest moments in the franchise's history. He's the central character in it. Right, we're going to hear from Brian Dable on this when we get back. Hey, 